Alistomania. Think less, but see it grow. Hello everybody, it is the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your September 2016 episode of 10 for 12. And of course, there's a playlist provided in the box below if you want to understand a little bit more about what this show is all about, and all the topics that I have covered so far. So, just want to let everybody know that this is actually my very first video that I am recording since I have been married and got back from my honeymoon. Yes, from the wizarding of scheduling, I managed to get a whole bunch of videos up while I was taking care of all of that thanks to a whole bunch of pre-recorded videos but we are back we are in full force and I'm really glad to finally be back in front of the camera because I really got to get back into this groove but of course this is also going to be a collaboration with another youtuber and I am so excited because this is a youtuber that I've actually known for so many years yet we barely ever said a word to one another except for comments and we never did a collab up until now she is one of my very first subscribers her name is Lindsay Mac and she is from Glasgow, Scotland, so I'm so excited to be doing this YouTube video collaboration with her, and I'm really hoping that this will, crazily enough, finally get us to start talking a little bit more and helping one another to build our YouTube channels. And the reason why I chose her to do this topic is because she's a big television fan. She talks a lot about television shows on her channel. So it's a television-themed episode with the brand new seasons of television starting up very, very soon, and we're going to be talking about those ten shows that we loved that went before their time. Television shows that lasted a very short amount of time, yet some created an impact and some did not, or some just created a massive cult following. So, here are my ten, and as always, this is a blind box, so I have no idea what Lindsay's choices are, but I am really excited to see what they are. So here are my ten, and we're going to start, of course, with number ten. And that is going to be HBO's The Newsroom, the Aaron Sorkin written show starring Jeff Daniels and Emily Mortimer. I own all three seasons, and I'm really upset that this show only lasted for three seasons. It may not have had the strongest ending, but the first season was totally amazing, and I loved how it really depicted the way that the newsroom worked in regards to how the news is actually brought to the masses. It was a real trip back in time to very recent history to see how the news actually uncovered some of the greatest news stories of the beginning of 2010 and beyond. We saw everything from the BP oil spill to the capture and assassination of Osama bin Laden. So we really saw some awesome stuff on this show and as I said, it didn't end off on the greatest of notes, but it still was one of the better shows that I have seen, and I wished it really could have continued on. Number nine is a very interesting one, because this is definitely a name that a lot of people know, especially if you're 80s children. Rainbow Bright. Did you know that Rainbow Bright only lasted one season with 13 episodes? Yet it was a pop culture phenomenon that sold so many merchandise products as well as a full-length movie, Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer. And if you have seen that movie, I want your comments in the box below because I love that movie. But 13 episodes? One season? Really? I thought that this show had at least four seasons under its belt. It's quite surprising to know that a major pop culture phenomenon was such a short-lived television show. Number eight is actually two shows because they came out around the same time and were actually part of what was called DC Nation on Cartoon Network. That was Young Justice and Green Lantern, the animated series. Two shows that only lasted for two seasons and both ended on incredible cliffhangers. Everybody was excited to see these shows go on further, but for some strange reason, Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network decided to pull the plug. We don't know why, we don't understand, but there's even been rumors that the show is being picked up for Netflix to be renewed, and I really hope that that is the case, because when you end these two amazing shows on such crazy cliffhangers like you did... It only means at least carry it on for one season more. And I highly recommend that you watch both of these shows because one of them was the very first CGI DCAU show. And Young Justice, forget it, was just such a brilliant and mature show, even though it did feature young kids. Number seven is a show called The Oblongs. You may have heard of it, you may have not. But it was definitely the perfect story about the perfect family 
of Freaks. Starring Gene Smart, Billy West, and Will Ferrell, it's the story of a family that lives near a toxic waste dump and they all have physical deformities. It was so wrong and so politically incorrect, but it was so brilliantly done. It only lasted for 13 episodes. I managed to watch the entire series thanks to Cartoon Network's Adult Swim in its earlier years, and I even own the entire season on DVD. I highly recommend you check it out. It is so funny and it's brilliant. Number six. While well, I'm wearing his shirt, it's Nickelodeon's Invader Zim. How could I not include Invader Zim in this grouping of shows? Invader Zim was a Nickelodeon show that had a very big following, but got a lot of nasty letters from parents saying, we don't want this show being shown to our children. But this show was on at night, so why would your kids be up watching a show like Invader Zim? It was funny, it was creepy, and at some points it was even so damn adorable thanks to Gurr. If you haven't seen Invader Zim, be prepared, because you may get a little disturbed and on edge, but it is definitely one of the better animated series that Nickelodeon has ever given us. It's right up there with Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life, just to name a few. Number five is Arrested Development. While it did actually get picked up for a fourth season by Netflix or Stars, I don't remember which channel it was, it didn't have as much impact as those first three seasons. Jason Bateman came back into the spotlight, and now he is one of the best comedic actors out there. He's even writing and directing now. If you've seen Bad Words, it's a funny movie. Put your comments in the box below. That's a fantastic film, especially also if you're a fan of Horrible Bosses. But this show had such a great cast of characters, including Jessica Walter, Jeffrey Tambor, Michael Sarah, Henry Winkler, Scott Bayo. It was just such a crazy show, and it was out there. Like, I'm talking about really out there. And it actually set the standard for a lot of the smart comedies that have come out on network television and cable television and Netflix in the years to come. It's just a pity that it just couldn't continue. Not to mention the fact that Ron Howard was actually the narrator of the show. That was the real kicker. Number four is Freaks and Geeks, the Judd Apatow show starring a whole bunch of unknowns at the time now known, including Seth Rogen, Jason Siegel, and James Franco, not to mention Linda Cardellini. It was a show that was only around for one year, and it really depicted a true concept of high school in the 1980s. It was such a great show that depicted outcasts and how some of them tried to fit in and how some of the others just wanted to beat to their own drums. If you haven't seen this show, what are you doing? You've got to watch this show. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I really do plan to watch it again in its entirety. I highly recommend it. Number three is The Honeymooners. Everybody knows Ralph and Alice Cramden. But did you know that the show itself only lasted for one year? Did you know that when you actually watch the Honeymooners Marathon on New Year's Eve, you basically are watching the entire series? Now, granted, a couple of these shorts were part of the Jackie Gleason show, but I'm really shocked that the Honeymooners itself was only around for one season. And yet the Hanna-Barbera masterpiece, that is the Flintstones, lasted for six years, and that was directly based on the Honeymooners. If you have never seen an episode of the Honeymooners, because I know a lot of you are much younger, you've got to talk to... I I don't know, parents, grandparents, great aunts, great uncles, I don't know who you can speak to, but you've got to see The Honeymooners. It is so funny, and for the time, it was definitely ahead of it, and it set the standard for comedy as we know it today. Number two is one of my all-time favorites, and it is The Critic, the short-lived show featuring John Lovitz on Fox. It came up right after The Simpsons. It was actually created by the same creators of The Simpsons, and oh my god, that show was brilliant. I don't know why it only lasted for two years, but it was so great. It was so hilariously smart and funny. I love the fact that it revolved around movies. All of the spoofs that they made were just hysterical to watch. And let's not forget the father of Jay Sherman, Franklin Sherman. If you think that Peter Griffin is crazy, watch this show and watch his father. He's the reason why I love this show to this very day. Some of the most hilarious lines ever came from that show. The Critic. It is fantastic. And my number one show that went before its time. You may have guessed it. Maybe you haven't. But it's the Joss Whedon science fiction masterpiece, Firefly. You know... I didn't watch it when it first aired. I actually went and watched it on Netflix. So many people were telling me how amazing this show was. I watched that whole series in less than 
two days. And then I watched Serenity, and I purchased it 15 minutes after I started watching the movie on Netflix. The cast is amazing. Nathan Fillion, Adam Baldwin, Monica Baccarin, just to name a few. Oh my god, it is such a fantastic show with a great diverse cast, some of the best lines that you will ever hear in a science fiction show, and I love the beautiful incorporation of the science fiction space opera and the western. It's a great story about a post-apocalyptic future. It's got such heart and such life. You, even if you've never seen a science fiction show in your life, Firefly will definitely be something that you will be drawn to. And Joss Whedon, I mean, what can you say? Look at all the amazing things that he has done alongside Firefly. So anything from Joss Whedon, you know that it is a winner. And those are my 10 shows that went before their time. Please put your comments in the box below. Let me know if I missed any shows that you watched that went before their times, because I know that there are a couple that I'm sure that I did not include, but would definitely praise and talk about them if you like, because there's so many really great short-lived television shows out there. And once again, Lindsay, thank you so much for doing this with me. I am very excited to see what your 10 shows are, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in the next episode of 10 for 12, and actions speak louder than words.